Well, I'm Oregon grown. <laughs> I was born in Washington, moved to Oregon at two months old, and lived in small town Myrtle Creek, south of Roseburg. So now I live in Springfield. My first fair, uh, a friend of mine, Bob Heilman, who worked at the com Community Village Info Booth, they were having a Community Village meeting and they brought up the subject of access. This is 1984. And he says, well, I know somebody who does that for the county in Douglas County. So he called me and said, would you come and do an, an assessment of the fair, see how accessible it is. So I came for the day and I fell in love. Went, went to Eugene, got a motel, came back the next day, came all three days, and I said, I gotta figure out a way to be a part of this. It's just awesome. So um, that summer I did an exchange with Germany about independent living movement in the United States. And this is before ADA and all that stuff. So I was really into that equal access kind of mentality and I'd always lived in, independently, though I've been disabled my entire life. So, um, and my friend who was blind, who also went on that trip with me, she came out to fair in 85. So we went to Community Village and they said, well, you can work out of the health booth. We said, well, it's not a health issue. It's an access issue, equal access. And they said, well, we don't have any place to put you except the health booth or peace and justice, and it's too full. So we spent three years in the health booth at Community Village until Village decided, we'll give you your own booth. And they gave us four passes. So we did that for a number of years, and then I coordinated that. And then we got a friend of ours who was also disabled to get on the board so he could educate the board up there. Then they gave us a crew. And this is back in the early 90s. I don't remember dates or years. And we started out with 36 crew, with 12 of them being sign language interpreters, 12 of them working what is now the Dragon, and 12 of them in the village. And now we've grown to 50, 52 crew plus plus 12 village crew, plus 36 day passes, plus there's 150 of us about. So we get our passes in various places and do access for fair. In the parking lot, camping, potties, all of it. You know, and we help alter able people find their spot, uh, help make sure that everybody's having a wonderful time. Everybody should come here and experience it and not be segregated or put over here because you're special or treated a certain way. So I get a lot of mail that say thank you, thank you for treating me like a human. <laughs> you know, the fair does that for everyone, I think. And so I just wanted to include myself and all the other people like me. <laughs> Most of the time, as a person in a chair, when you go somewhere, they escort you over here and say, this is where you, you go, this is where you park, this is where you be, you know, and here, you're free to be wherever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. And that's something that I've always looked for in life and so wanted to make sure that's happening for everybody who comes. You know, we try to do equal access to the joy and the love that was apparently here and always has and always will be, I think. We've grown a lot and the fair was doing access way before they made it a law. And we're always educating new people. We I always wanted to work myself out of a crew that everybody would be aware enough that each crew would do their part to make sure that everybody was taken care of. But that's not so because there's always new people coming on, new people that need to be educated and uh, you know that kind of thing. Like this year we're having trouble with bathrooms again. They're not accessible ones out here enough yet. So it's a new crew working for their, that company, so 
Now we have to educate them about what we need and where and, you know, to include our crew into, we'll help you manage that. We know where things need to, and we put it on the map for when public comes, they'll say, where's an accessible bathroom? Well, there's one here, 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 here. So those kind of things have, have changed. Uh, there's more and more ultra-able people in the world. There's more and more elders. There's, and so that population has grown at the fair tremendously. But there's a lot more younger people coming too, ultra-able younger people and getting involved. That's what I see differently. You know, there's ultra-able people working on lots of crews. So that's a good, good thing, yeah. And for the future, I'd just like to see it continue. And we don't need to grow too much. I don't think as a crew, we just need to grow in our education of awareness and grow in our expansion of educating other people. I think that's our main thing that we do is educate the individual, but as, as a community, there's so many things that we can do for each other. What's your vision for the future? To not have an ultra-able access crew, that everybody just does it, that it's not something you, that it's something they know, because I think that's what fair is about: is treating everyone equal and and being a part of this wonderful community. That I just would like us to work ourselves out of a crew, and it just be. <laughs> that's what I'd like. It's, it's an honor. It's, it's really, really an honor to be here and to be a part of this and watch the magic happen and to be a part of that. And I try to carry it with me throughout my life. And my kids have grown up here. My grandkids are here now. This is our 30th anniversary of the crew. So, you know, we've got a long ways to go, but it's a nice fair pace. <laughs> yeah. There's so many other people that were involved in the beginnings and so many people still involved. You know, I don't take credit for any of it because without the whole group, it would have would never have happened, you know. That you know, sometimes you need a pushy bitch to go do this part and you need a gentle soul over here to do this part and you know, you those kind of people just are available. <laughs> it's wonderful, you know. I'm really honored to have such a wonderful crew, you know, and don't have much turnover. I think we have two new people this year, <laughs> it's all. You know, 16 sign language interpreters. So that's, and they love it, and they turn the word into dance, you know. So, and it takes a certain kind of interpreter to interpret country fair language. <laughs> you know, they'll do the whole, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, and it's fine. <laughs> you know, and it's like what we say is what happens here stays here because they're professional sign language interpreters and get paid big money. They do court, they do all this kind of stuff, and and here. You're a volunteer, just have fun doing it, you know? And they come back year after year after year. So, uh, Meryl, do you remember Meryl? She does wristbands. She was one of her first interpreters way back. Yeah. yeah so, there's been a few, but stories from you. <laughs> I'm good. You recorded that, didn't you?